permission to ask the young lady a question, Madame Suzanne? Before I says yes, and before I says no, I got to know just what the question is. I want to know if she's going to marry the Count de La Richelle. Good heavens, no. Who's that? A certain French nobleman, who rumor says was at her feet in Paris. But such an idea never entered my head. Hello, hello, hello. We've come to bring you some presents. We found this peddler fellow on the road, and Mademoiselle thought perhaps he and his small companion here might amuse you. But well, you might have chosen a better time. The mailboy's waiting for these letters. Oh, one can write letters any time. Look, Monsieur George, what I bought for you. This rosary. The men swear the beads are real tortoise shell and the chain gold. Yes, very, very fine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mademoiselle. And this beautiful tortoise shell comb is for you. Because you have the most beautiful hair in the world. Look. Oh, thank you. Thank Monsieur André. He paid for it. I didn't have any money. <laughs> oh, well, it's very handsome, but I, I'm afraid it's much too expensive. A gift for me to receive from a gentleman. I'm sure your mother would like it. Yes, very, very fine. Real tortoise chef. I wanted to have this thing, but you won't sell it. No, no, mademoiselle. Me no sell it, Joker. No, no. Now you must play for Monsieur Satouri. <laughs> Fetch me some cognac. Yes, monsieur, but you take it easy till the party starts. Alone, Monsieur George? Yes, ma'am, monsieur. Do you or do you not like this dress? Isn't it perfect? I have another one that might be better. No, no, keep that on. I will. What a comfort to have important matters decided by a gentleman. <laughs> Thank you, Monsieur George. Thank you. Oh, there was something else. Oh, yes, this bracelet. I can't fasten it in pecans, can you? Try. Hmm, the lock sprung a little. There. Now I know I will have success in this dress tonight. Has Mr. Brigard gone on yet? Yes, Monsieur. Master's in his study, just waiting for the guests to start getting here. Dresses and got too big running your legs off for that, Monsieur George. <laughs> Don't fuss if it's too big, pin it. No, no, no. My gracious, if I hadn't heard every word that passed between you two, I think he'd already popped the question. Well, perhaps he would have if you'd not been all eyes and ears every moment. I'm going to be all eyes and ears until you two jumps to Brumstick, child. Well, you'll not be tonight. At least he'll be able to say a few words to me alone before he goes tomorrow. I hope there's the words you've been waiting for, huh? Oh, they are. Oh, what have I done to deserve him, Suzanne? What has any woman done to deserve such a man? You've been good and sweet, Pat. Hold still to need another pen. You're good and sweet and nice, and that's enough for any man. Now, go down and show him your pretty self. Oh, Pompey, has Monsieur Sartoris come down? Yes, mademoiselle. Him's in there with Massa, but I wouldn't disrupt him yet a while. Oh, Louise, wait. There's something I want to say to you before anyone else comes. No. Yes, I've just spoken to your father, and he tells me I must speak to you. You've spoken to Papa about... Can't you guess? I'm in love with your sister. She's a bad. Didn't you know it? No, uh, I didn't know it. <laughs> and I thought the whole world knew it. But why do you tell me? Why don't you tell her? Because your father hesitates to give his consent without your approval. He seems to think that we aren't suited to each other. Yes, I understand that. Gilbert's so frivolous. And you're so serious. Too serious, perhaps. That's what I'm afraid of. But he says that you've decided everything for her all her life and that you're to decide this. So my fate is in your hands, dear Louise. Do say you approve. I approve, I approve. Why, yes, 
Yes, why shouldn't I prove? Why, you're the very person to cure Frou-Frou of her frivolity. Well, I don't want to cure her. Her frivolity is the very thing that makes her so attractive. Shall I send her to you? I, I advise you to speak to her at once. You may find rivals here tonight. Everyone loves Frou-Frou, it seems. I don't think I haven't thought of that. Oh, Louis, which do you like better with this dress, the rosebuds or the gardenia? Does it matter? You look serious. What's happened? Let Monsieur Georges tell you. He's waiting for you now. Monsieur Georges? Oh, it's what he does, Frou Frou. Be wise for once. Be wise? What do you mean? He loves you. He's spoken to Papa. He wishes to marry you. Marry me? Monsieur Georges? Thank Catherine has done that. I prayed for her husband, and now she sends me Monsieur George. She's dead. <laughs> but it's all so funny. <laughs> I, I, I can't get used to the idea at all. <laughs> Monsieur George. Who? <laughs> Monsieur George. Who hasn't a fall to his name? Whom everybody praises to the skies, wants to marry me? Me? Fufu? Well, I could understand if it would be Monsieur André. That would be different. Perhaps. But between the two, surely you can't hesitate. Oh, Frou Frou, even if you don't love Monsieur Georges now, you'll learn to love him when he's your husband. Yes, I admit, that ought to be easy. And I don't deny I like him very much. And it's so exciting to have such a man in love with you. And Aren't you in love with him yourself? Do you think a woman in love with a man would ask another woman to marry him? I would. 